So today I'm going to be painting my uh, scratch-built um, Charnel Throne, which is the faction terrain for the Flesh Eater Quartz in Age of Sigmar. And if you noticed, everywhere I have put this, a picture of this, I have said scratch-built. Uh, I'm quite pleased with my with my outcome, so I'm bragging about it to literally everyone and anyone who will listen. So. That's why it's not just the charnel throne, it's the scratch-built charnel throne. So, uh, this is my test base for my Flesh Eater Quartz. Uh, this will be the base for the Arch Regent, which is like the Warlord-type dude. Uh, so, the stone on this is going to match this. At least, that's the plan. And then the basing will match this basing, and then we'll use these tufts on it. Um, my Flesh Eater Quartz, the plan is that they're going to be have yellow skin. So this uses a little bit of a s sort of a purplish, grayish color, Warp Fiend Gray. It has a sort of purple tint to it. Purple and yellow are complementary colors. So even if you can't tell it's purple when they're when the yellow and the purple are next to each other, they'll work together and it'll be good. So here we go. Uh, this looks like a relatively simple stone. Um, if you get real up close, you might be able to see a couple of the underlying colors. I'm not sure how many of the underlying colors actually matter, but I really like how this color came out, and so I'm going to do every single one of them, even if maybe some of them aren't going to show up that well. But, regardless, I'm going to start with Wildwood. That's going to be the, the base itself, the dirt color, essentially, for the army. So I'm just going to paint this all over the base. Um, if it gets in the bones and stuff, that's okay. Not a big deal, because I will go back and paint the bones with a, an actual bone color later. So, not a problem. Um, so this base is cork. Um, and then on top of that is couple layers of spray paint well no on top of that is uh some sand some grit sand grit uh some t weathering powder and i think that's it um so some of it as you see here is gonna come off while i'm doing this um i didn't didn't do anything specifically to lock down my weathering powder uh just primed over it it's not a problem in this case because the the uh, contrast paint I'm using will just mix with it basically and blend it all down into the dirt. And I knew that was going to happen, and so I didn't worry too much about it. Um, also, if this weathering powder isn't completely attached to the base, it's not a huge deal because this model is just a piece of terrain, so it doesn't do a lot of moving throughout the battle just sits there and then does its thing so the weathering powder doesn't need to necessarily be as robust as it might need to be on a actual model that's going to move around the board so I'm just gonna like I said it doesn't matter if I hit the bones here as long as I get all the dirt completely covered because I'll come back and I will paint the bones with an actual bone color. Just want to make sure that all the in-between bits between the bones are 100% brown so that if I miss any spots we get a nice dirt color between the bones instead of just this white primer. Here's some more of that texture powder. I'm just mixing it in. There's probably going to be a fair amount back here. That's okay. It'll just mix around with the contrast paint. And if you were doing this and you really wanted to be careful, uh, you should rinse your brush out between every... every time the brush touches this base, basically, because you'll... you'll get some weathering powder that's stuck in the bristles, and if you're really picky, you don't want that going in your contrast paint. I'm not super picky. I'm going to go through this bottle of contrast paint in probably a day once I get 
this army going, and it's all going to be on the bases. So if it's a little textury or powdery, it's not a problem. So this um, this process involves pretty much all contrast paint, uh, which is not necessarily the best paint to use for on stream because it takes a long time to dry. But I'm hoping if I alternate between one color on the base, one color on the steps, one color on the base, one color on the steps, back and forth, that the dry time will be enough between each color that we won't run into any problems. If I have to, I can pull out the emergency hair dryer, but I'd prefer not to. So it's almost done there. The dirt, just making sure the dirt color gets all the way up to the edge of the stone. And then just make sure all our under, well, under all the overhangs are covered. And then I just want to make sure that the there's paint on the edges here. Don't want any raw cork showing. Not the end of the world if it is, but I just prefer there to not be. All right, and if you're wondering, um. Like I said, this is going to be like a an ego trip of a stream because I'm quite happy with how this scratch build turned out. Um, everything here is blue insulation foam, um, aside from these thicker pegs, which are uh, just wooden dowels. The thinner ones are paperclip, and then the skulls are little metal skulls I had the bones are little plastic bones I had and these pieces here on the top are pieces left over from uh, Archon the Black's chariot from way back in Warhammer Fantasy days they were just sitting in a bag so I figured let's give them some use alright so there's the dirt laid down now I'm going to go into the first color of the steps of the stone, which is going to be Creed Camo. And I'm going to put this in all the cracks of the stone. And this is going to be like a moss or lichen or whatever. Just going to go in all the crevices. It is on this original one, this test I did. You, can't, you can sort of see it in some of the recesses, not a ton. But I think you'd notice if it wasn't there. I think you'd see the difference. So I'm going to do it. And it won't take that long. And um, again, there might be some weathering powder loose. That's okay. We'll just mix with it. And this doesn't have to be just in the crevices. If some gets on the stone a little bit, it's not a big deal. Just have to be roughly aiming at the crevices and I think I'm going to do these uh, the lines here between the steps just thinking about where water would collect on the steps and stuff like that so if you have any little like parts that are in shadow or something, that would be a place water might collect. A little low area. I like there's a big crack in this stone, so I'll put it there. There's some divots in this stone. And these, I know I put weathering powder in these pretty heavily, so I'm going to Really make sure to slosh this contrast paint in there to lock all that texture powder down. In this instance, with all this texture powder in here, I'm almost using the contrast paint like a glue. 
that will hold all this texture in there. And if you wanted to go a step further on this, you could uh, probably come in with a, a lighter green, a layer paint, and stipple in some dots or some texture on top of these areas and just like just a little bit onto the flagstones themselves. And that would uh, that would really give you some depth on this mossy stuff. Uh, I'm not going to worry about that. The moss, this this color really isn't a main feature of my final paint job, so I'm not super concerned with it. Just want it to be subtly there. If I was going for like a mossy step look, then I would absolutely do one or maybe even two other greens to give this some texture. There's a little bit of a crack back behind the skull here. There we go. Flagstones didn't get cut quite as deep up here. That's okay. Hopefully no one's critiquing my flagstone depth cuts on uh, on this piece of terrain when I'm done. And this, like, bundle of, like, cream off-white color you see every now and again is, like I said, the the weathering powder that I'm hitting, and I'm just using this contrast paint as a glue to hold that stuff down. Which is absolutely, I'm sure, not the right, or not the recommended way to do it, but it works for my purposes. And that really is all that matters. Alright, so then I'm just going to put some on this part. And then I'll put some in here. I didn't do stone texture everywhere on this stuff. Um, just because I didn't think I really needed to. I figured that stonework on the steps would be would be good enough, to be honest, to sell the appearance of what I was going for. Almost done with this color. Just have a little bit of rock work to do on the back. And then we'll be all set. Alright. Another thing, another tip, if you're going to use blue insulation foam to do this kind of thing, um, I used a brush-on primer first, and then spray-painted um, my Zenithal onto this, because the aerosol 
in spray paint will melt insulation foam. You can mitigate it if you stand back a little bit um, so that the aerosol evaporates before it's, the paint hits the foam. I don't like to risk that though, typically, because sometimes you'll get it wrong, especially on something like this. If I was just doing like a generic rock, yeah, I'll risk it. But on a scratch build like this that I probably do not have the capability to repeat as nicely as the first one, I am not going to risk that, so I will just do a brush on primer layer first, and that will protect the foam from the subsequent layers of contra or of uh, spray paint, rather. All right, so there's that, and we will move on to the, I think, to the bones, and I'm going to do those. Hmm. What color am I going to do those in? I'm going to do them in Rackarth Flesh. Which I didn't get out before the stream. There we go. Rackarth Flesh. So I'm just going to paint all the bones in this color. And then I'll come back afterward and hit them with another color. But hopefully, by the time we finish the skulls, our green will be dry enough that we can do the next color on the stone. This is a, this is a game of remember where you put the skulls on this thing. Got a stray bristle or something right here. Just gonna grab it with some tweezers. There we go. All right. All right. I'm not being super careful with the base coat on these. Uh, skills because I'm going to come back and put ink or contrast over them anyway so as long as I get most of the thing covered in this color that'll be fine these bones I just want to be careful to not get a ton of paint on the dirt so we don't want the dirt to be the bone color I want the bones to be the bone color and the dirt to be the dirt color I haven't decided yet. Typically, flesh eater quartz have a lot of blood associated with them. And this would be no different considering it's called the charnel throne. However, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use blood effects on these guys. Or to what extent I'm going to use blood effects on these guys. So I'm not going to put any on this today. I'm going to wait until... I get the rest of the army done and then evaluate from there. And that's always something I could add later. It's not like it's... The army basically could be fully painted and then down the line have blood effects added to it. So I'm leaning towards not using any. But we'll see. We'll see. Alright, I think that's all the skulls except for the ones up here, obviously. 
So I'm just going to get these real quick. Again, I can afford to be pretty rough here because so many more layers of paint are going to go down on these guys that it does not matter. These five bros up here. And then I'm going to do these things, these big old spinal column looking things. I haven't decided if I'm going to do these in a bone color yet. So I'm going to get right up to the edge of them with this color. I'm going to I'm going to look at the piece as a whole when it's closer to being done and decide from there. They're either going to be bone or oh, I forgot the little skulls over there. Do those in a second. It's either going to be bone or gold colored. And I haven't decided yet. That's all of it. Alright, there we go. A little bit more in there. Now I'm just going to get these little skulls here. And the one rib cage there at the bottom. All right. That'll do for that. So now our green, I can see our green is mostly dry. Not 100%, but it's close enough for us to go to the next step. <laughs> the next step. Huh. So funny. Alright. So the next one, color is going to be Agaros Dunes. And this is just going to go all over the stone. Over the green, over the non-green, over everything. And again, I'm not sure how much of this is going to show up in the final paint job, but I think you'd notice a difference if it wasn't there. So, and since I like how that one, that first base I did came out, I'm going to stick with the exact same process on this one. That first base was sort of a, a guess and check. I just kind of threw colors at it until it looked like something I wanted. But now that I'm happy with that, all the rest will follow suit. Just going to make sure to get the, the front 
plate of the stair. I don't know what that part of the stair is called. I think the part you step on is called the tread. The riser, maybe? I don't know. I'm not up on my stair lingo. So I'm not honestly sure what that part of the step is called. If a little bit of this color gets on some skulls, not the end of the world. If they're a little bit dirty, well, they are skulls out in the wild, so they might be a little bit dirty. That looks like all of that. Um, also, I would just mention if you're going to work with this, uh, this blue foam, um, you can just glue it together with super glue. That is what I did. Um, it will melt your connection points a tiny bit if you are sloppy with your glue, um, but it's not a not a crazy amount. I don't think I see any spots where the glue really like melted something, and it's obvious that it messed it up. Um, but if you do want to be sure that it won't melt anything um there is like foam specific adhesive for foam that you can pick up um it's usually in the same aisle as the foam itself so wherever you get your get your foam or if you get it on amazon google some foam adhesive it'll come up i would recommend not getting the spray for this kind of thing you don't want to be spraying the glue on your workbench on these tiny pieces. If you're joining giant pieces together, sure. I would not consider these giant pieces, though. So then I'm just going to get the rest of the throne here. Wipe that off. That skull there. Might have been a little too much to pull off. Alright. All right, so there's that, our next color. I'm just gonna wipe up these big splotches there. All right. So then I think we will do the next color on the bones, which is going to be a surprise to all, I know. And it's going to be Skeleton Horde. Contrast paint. I know, you're all shocked.
and I'm just going to put this all over the bones, basically. Just to give them a little more depth. And then we're going to come back to the very end and dry brush them. Some of our brown isn't 100% dry, but it's okay. Should still be fine, mostly. There we go. Didn't get the front of that skull. There we go. Let's just get these and the vertebra here. Oh, my paint pot closed. So rude. All right. I think that's all the skulls. Got those. Yep, good. Alrighty. So I think we've got, we've got contrast paint drying in a couple places still. Oh, I missed the spot right here on the top of those skulls. There we go. Alright. So, we've got contrast paint drying in a couple places, so I'm just going to do some of the smaller bits here, like the wood on the back and the metal grating and stuff like that. So for the wood, I'm going to use Saigo Brown, and for the fence, I'm going to use Iron Warriors. Did I? I painted that like stone. I think I'll just leave those as stone and not do them as wood. So I'll just do this, this wooden beam up here. Which is just meant as the support to the throne. No big deal. But then we will do the fence after that. And then go on to the next step. Probably be on camera, huh? There we go. <laughs> Just that little bit in the front. All right. Oh, I didn't do the back of that. Shameful. It's okay. I'll fix that in a minute. When I do the next step of the stone, I'll just make sure to get that spot also. Not a big deal. Not going to worry about it now. So then I'm just going to paint this, this metal fencing here, paper clip. Could have just left it metal, maybe. <laughs> just use the paper clip metal. But no, it would look weird and wouldn't be good. And I think there's also a couple metal bits on the front of the throne. There's some little, like, handle details. 
So I'm going to paint those also. There we go. All right, and then, like I said, I'm just going to do these handles real quick. There's a couple little handle things on the front here. Right there. And another one over here with a chain on it. Wonderful. And I think that's it. Dang, camera, can you focus? Please, thanks. Alright. So that should be it for the metal. Our, our gray, or our brown still, light brown, isn't 100% dry. So I'm deciding if I want to just go on. Or if I want to break out the hair dryer. Um, I think I'll do my light dry brush real quick on the base. And then I'll just move on to the next color if they mix a little bit. Not the end of the world. So I'm using a steel agent drab here. Just doing a light dry brush onto the dirt of this base here. Sort of more like an overbrush really. Um, but fairly light. Just to give the dirt a little more of a tone change in a couple places. Not going to be anything super noticeable, but it will do something. And the dirt will stick out a lot more once the stone isn't brown since the stone will be transitioning to gray in the next two steps. The dirt will pop more. That's good for now though. Just a something different anyway. Alright, so then we will go on to the next step of the stone, which will be Basilicum Gray. And just going to apply this exactly the same way that we applied the aggro stones all over the stone. This will darken it down quite a bit, which is the goal. Make sure that every nook and cranny is sufficiently shaded so that when we go to the overbrushing slash dry brushing step, we can get that nice shaded gray that we're looking for. And you can put this on heavier in some places, lighter in some places, just to mix it up if you want. I'm just kind of putting my brush in the pot and whatever comes out, that's how much I'm putting on. I'm not being super specific with it. But you absolutely could be. You could be very targeted with how much you applied in which areas. Here's the step. I said I would make sure to get that post. And this on the like the third or fourth contrast is when you start to wonder did I really need to use all of these on the same spot? Like couldn't you just have started with the third one? But like I've said a couple times now I think they all sort of help the final effect even if they aren't the main star of the show. The 
back of the throne here. Okay. All right, I think I got it all. Just make sure we don't have too big of a clump anywhere. Like that. Oh nope, not quite. Gotta get the top of the top of the seat here, and the back of the seat, and the top of the back of the seat. Yeehaw. All right, so there's that part done. Now we're still looking pretty wet on a couple of the contrast paints, so I am going to use the hair dryer here. Might be a little loud. I do apologize. I don't plan my paint schemes out sometimes, and I forget that I'm going to need the hair dryer for some of these things. So hopefully it'll go pretty quick, though. I just needed to dry enough that I can do the dry brushing. If it's not dry in some of the cracks, that's okay because the dry brush will not be in there anyway. So. That's all good, but I need it to be dry on the surfaces at least so that I can use the dry brush. And I'm mainly focused on the skulls currently because I'm going to dry brush them first. Then I'll come back and dry brush the stone after. Alright, so they're good now. I'm just going to grab myself. Now this is actually right there. It's not what I'm going for. But that stone is actually a nice color. If the base were a different color, the stone's actually not bad. It's sort of like Rebel Base Yavin sort of look, but went through a nuclear bomb. It's a little... A little too dark for that, but um, the Death Star fired, and that's that's what you got. All right, what was I looking for? I was looking for some paint. Oh, the paint to dry brush the skulls with. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I'm using the ever faithful race bone. Get my dry brush here. Always use the hair dryer. Yep. Nathan, did you join while the hair dryer was going? What a thing to start with. <laughs> join the stream. <laughs> Fantastic. So yeah, I'm just going to dry brush the skulls here. And the rest of the bones. Just popping in for a second, but I gotta say that looks great. Thanks. Well, if you're just staying for a second, tell me. It's gonna come out like that. Can you see it yet? Can you see how the transition's gonna be made yet? Because it's right now, it seems like that that isn't gonna be that, Greg. That no, not that. It does. At least I uh, hope. It did the first time. We'll see if I can replicate it. Nuked Rebel Base Yavin, the perfect color. I should start my own paint line, and that'll be the first color. Nuked Rebel Base Yavin. Joined literally as you announced using the hair dryer. Perfect. <sighs> Um, that would actually be hilarious to, well, either way, it'll be fine. I've noticed some discrepancies between your model and the official GW version. Uh, yes, there are, there are quite a few discrepancies, in fact. Um, mine, well, actually, this is perfect. While we wait for paint to dry, we can go through some of the discrepancies. Um, so theirs, I discovered... 
is about four and a half inches wide and about two and a half inches deep. So if we grab ourselves a handy dandy measurement device, we will in fact discover that mine is closer to five inches wide, but not bad. You know, more like exactly five inches wide. But, you know, half an inch, not bad. And then this way, it's about just about four inches deep. So, you know, quite a bit bigger that way. Also, uh, this, these stairs are not as steep on mine. There are the same number of steps, though, I'm pretty sure. These, though, I have two more steps than I should have. This should have also been six, and I think I have eight. Uh... Two, four, six, yep, eight, including the top steps are really nine. I'm pretty sure they only have six, including the top step, but you know, whatever. Um, and yeah, you know, it's it's fine though. No one's gonna complain. My army's gonna be trash, it's not gonna be competitive. So my army will look cooler than yours, and if you want to complain about my faction terrain, I will get up and leave. Not not you specifically, Payton. Just if someone were to be like that's not legal, Greg. You can't use that. I'll be like, all right, I'm going to take an early lunch then. Um, or what would be better would be to have the official model in my bag and just whip it out and plunk it down and be like, fine. You want to use the worst and just paint it like absolute terrible paint job. Just paint the official one like a five-year-old painted it. Be like, all right, table looks worse now. Here you go on you buddy all right so i'm just gonna clear up a couple spots where our driver or our ink is heavy i was going crazy with that ink there that's true if it's a galactic tournament i can't just talk to the to and he almost always agrees with me it's very rare that i don't get the to to agree with what i'm saying and for people who are not local and are confused, I am the T.O. So. I was about to say, you painted half my corn army so it looks better. So if yours looks better, it's not my fault. Wow. that I mean, yeah, that's fair. That whole rant, though, was not directed literally at you. Since I don't think if I plunked this down, you're not going to be like, Well, actually, Greg, you can't use that because it's an inch and a half too deep and half an inch too wide. No. All right. So, still waiting on this to dry a little bit, so I'm just going to highlight the metal real quick. Uh, good old iron breaker. Super complicated technique, this highlighting this metal here. Um, so, pay attention. I'm going to touch the top of each one of these. Then I'm going to go shink, 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 put a little here, put a little there, flip the bad boy over, and do the same thing. I know. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, they do have these things, though. I'm going to highlight these a little more carefully. There we go. What's the height difference? Uh, that I do not know. I have not been able to find a measurement of the height. Um, I looked, and I could not find it. Um, although the height, as far as I can tell, the height literally doesn't matter. Um, every every effect that comes out of it, it's not like it has a shooting attack or anything. Every effect that comes out of it is just measured to the base. So... The height will not matter. Um, I figure if someone complains, like really complains about it, um, I can say that it's the distance to the actual like footprint of the fence and the thing here, because then that's four inches. So that's less than the official model. And right here is just almost exactly two and a half. So just ignore the base if someone really wants to worry about it. Um, although you just have to be for the big different or the big thing, the big effect about it is that it, uh, well, uh, next color I'm using is vampiric highlight 
gonna highlight the skulls a little bit. Um, the biggest effect this thing has is that if you're within an inch of it, you don't have to use a command point when you use a summon. Um, and it's you're within an inch, so I mean, you can put your base like you can put it there and be fine, there and be fine. You're never, you're very, very, very rarely going to ever have to min max your inch exactly. So I don't anticipate it being a problem. The other bonuses it gives are pretty situational, and even in a situation where they'd be effective, they're mediocre. So, so I'm just going to dot this vampiric highlight around these bones a little bit, just to brighten a couple of them up. some skulls in here all right so always forgetting about these skulls in there all right so there we've brightened some of these skulls up and brighten these up a little bit more maybe even a little bit more that's good Get that rib bone or thigh bone, whatever it is. I think it's actually a backbone, like a a wing bone, I guess. I don't know what it's called. That big old flat bone behind your lung. I think that's what those are from some kit from who knows when. All right, so then we're going to do the main color of the stone, and that is going to be Mechanicus Standard Gray. And we're going to do this sort of like an overbrush slash dry brush sort of deal. Um... If you don't know the difference between overbrushing and dry brushing, uh, I'll go through it real quick. Uh, let's see if I have an example here. I have a miniature that, yeah, we can sacrifice one of these guys. I'll just reprime him. So overbrushing is, well, okay, so first of all, you have painting. There's painting. You take the paint and apply it. I know, it's, it's a big thing you're learning here. Overbrushing, you get your paint on your brush and you get most of it off, and then you go over it. So that you can still see here, there, there's no gaps between the paint. Here, there's gaps between the paint, but still, the surfaces are mostly painted. Dry brushing, you continue to get paint off your brush, and then you come here. And you do this. This is a terrible color to do it on. But the idea is, yeah, you can definitely not see that. But the color is just on the raised edges. So paint, overbrush, dry brush. So what we're going to do is go somewhere in between overbrushing and dry brushing. Closer to dry brush. Uh, closer to overbrushing, though. So we want to get most of the um, surface covered, but we want there to be some stuff showing through. Not a lot, but some. So, here we go. And if it streaks a little bit, that's okay. We're not worried about it. It's a little too much brown up there. There we go. The, the two dry brushes we're going to do on top of this will also help sell this color quite a bit. Um, if you do a... For instance, right now we have a sort of a mix of a brown and a gray. If you were to do brown highlights, your eye is going to read this as a lot more brown than gray. But we're going to do gray highlights, so the gray is going to read 
much more strongly, which is what we want. And if I really wanted to, like, really dive into this and take some time on this, I would individually paint each stone with a slightly different color to the one next to it, or at least most of them with a slightly different color. Um, because, you know, not every stone is going to be identical. But this is faction terrain. Probably will never be the focus of the army. <laughs> Although there are some cheesy builds where you just stack your characters around this thing and summon for free all game. But I don't think those builds are actually viable. So I also don't want to buy like an entire second army just of summons. That seems outrageous. All right, so just gotta get all this brown covered up here with the gray. And then we've got two more steps of dry brush. Um, paint these things up top here, which I think I've mostly decided are gonna be gold. And then add some tufts and call it a day. I skip a wall here? Yeah, I sure did. I think I actually skipped quite a few walls, yeah. This thing has an annoying, like... I'm not sure what you call it exactly. A uh, paint orientation? No. A paint, a paint path. That's what it is, a paint path. So like, for instance, going back to the Space Marine I just ruined, a paint path is pretty simple. Like if you're gonna do a leg, you like start on the leg and you move down the leg and you go around and there it is. This thing is like, you go up the stairs and then down and then that carries you around but then you forgot down here but then this doesn't feed into anything it's got a weird paint path I'm sticking to it so you just got this back part to do here you know I put these two little crumbles out here like they'd fallen off somewhere but I didn't break anything up here so there's just these crumbles from like the last time before it was repaired or something. I don't know. Cognitive dissonance. What the heck, man? Build your terrain better. All right, just a little bit more up here. Just knock that brown down just a little bit. All right. So there's the gray all... Did I get the back of the... Yeah. All right, I think I'll go ahead and paint this top bit here. I think I'm going to do it in, am I going to do it in gold? Yeah, I'm going to do it in gold. I'm going to start with Necro Gold, my favorite scale 75 gold. And I'm just going to cover the whole thing. I'm liking, liking my choice of color on this. I think it's gonna gonna look good, and that means that this will be the gold I use on the rest of the army for any gold that they use. Can't remember how much metallic is really on them. I don't think a lot. So 
might not really come up, but uh, if there is metallic anywhere, like maybe on a necklace or something, I will be using this gold for it. So there's that. Once it dries, I'll put some uh, some Gullum and Flesh Tone in there just to give it a little bit of depth. And then I'll highlight it with the next scale 75 gold whose name I've forgotten. Bright gold or something. Uh, Paradox Alchemy. That one. All right, but now I'm going to move into the next step of the stone, and that's going to be this Warp Fiend Gray. And I talked about this at the beginning of the stream, but this has, as you can see, a slightly purple tint to it. And because I've decided I'm going to do my army with yellow skin, purple and yellow being complementary colors, um, even if you can't necessarily tell this is purple, um, your eye will, your brain will make the connection and the army will will look better than if they were on just a gray stone. So I'm just going to dry brush this onto a stone here. And this is a true dry brush this time. Um, maybe a tiny bit wetter than a true dry brush, but not much. But we do want the this color to be seen. We don't want it completely hidden. But we don't want it to overpower the gray that's already on the model. I just dip that. No. thought I dipped the miniature in my paint for a second. But I didn't. We're good. Sure to get some in there. And on this one, don't have to be super worried about getting it on every surface. Just as long as we get it on the surfaces that are showing. And if we don't get it on the the internal surfaces, that's okay. stuff all right up there all righty so there's that color added and as you can see it's sort of a a slight purple tint to it not crazy, but it is slightly purple. So then, I'm going to use some Pallid Witch Flesh. And I'm going to dry brush this just on the sharpest points of this thing. So that'll be just the edges of the stones. And uh, like the edge of the pillars and stuff like that. So I'm just going to grab this and then come along. Let's do that. These edges would be the most worn. So that's where they're going to go. And the texture left behind by the foam will uh, 
will give you quite a nice texture for stone, especially broken up stone. All right, so there we go. That about does it. I have no idea what time it is. I feel like we've run over yet. It's 2.06. All right. So, I'm going to add some tufts real quick, and then we'll be done. Uh, I guess the gold is not going to be quite finished. I'll finish the gold up after the stream, and it will be in the final product. But for now, I'm just going to add some tufts. Let's just double check in comparison. Yep, I think that came out pretty similar. I will take it. Not 100% similar. This is definitely more brown than that is. But um, this is also getting helped by the black base rim. This doesn't have a base rim, so that's definitely helping that out in terms of the gray. But that's okay. So I'm just going to put some tufts around here. These tufts don't exactly match the, the theme of the army. Like, you'd think that there'd be a lot of, like, death and decay and stuff around these guys. And that was sort of my idea, that I wanted it to contrast with the theme of the army. So. But I'm not going to put these everywhere. They'll be s more spread out than I normally would, maybe. They'll be more spread out than I normally would. That's a heck of a sentence. I will not put as many tufts as I normally would. There we go. That's a sentence that makes sense. And um, this army is going to be uh, thematically from the realm of beasts, I think. Or something. Llamas or alpacas. I missed that comment. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, realm of beasts, I think? Or, I don't know. It's from the rocky, craggy sort of realm. So, there'd be some, some mountain grasses and stuff in my head. Floating around here. So, just a couple more, I think. Of these more leafy ones. I'm toying with the idea of putting one on the steps, like it's growing through the, the cracks in the steps, but I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that yet. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> so. Alright, that's looking pretty good. Let's just. I won't put any glue on this, I'll just experiment with it being up here. What do we think? I think we like it. I'm just going to stick that down. Phrasing? Is that still a thing? Apparently not. Well, I'm talking. I'm not going to glue this down. I'm just going to use the self-adhesive. Because if I hate it in an hour, I'm going to pull them off. So. We'll do that. And then maybe one of these down here. Not there. Maybe just here in the corner. Yeah. So we'll go with that for now. Let's see if we can manhandle the camera up so we can get a full view here. And bring the light over. All right, so there we go. There is our... I wouldn't put any on the steps. Okay, I mean, that's... That's why I didn't glue those, because <laughs> I'm going to have a think about it, and uh, I might even play a game with them like that and then decide if I want to keep them there or not. Well, we shall see. We shall see. But yeah, i um, just going to throw some Gulliman flesh on there, dry brush it a little bit, and that'll be that. Done. So yeah, uh, I'll be back next week, Monday at 8 p.m. in this group, painting... A Warhammer model, possibly continuing work on Mr. Wow, I've lost his name. Mr. Psyker Man, uh, who I'm sure all of you know the name of, but I've forgotten. Might work on him, or maybe a brand new model, who knows. 
Maybe I'll work on one of those, the new, the Tech Marine that's coming out. We'll see. Uh, and then on Wednesday, I'll do the beginner stream. And then Friday, I'll be back here doing something. Who knows? But thank you, everybody, for watching. And I will see you next time.